Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, first of all, let me thank the mission of the OEC to the Council of Europe for having us, my organization, the International Catholic Church Europe, to moderate this event with such distinguished personalities. Uh, let me just share just a few thoughts in order to introduce our discussion. And I would like to, to quote uh, Jan Martinson, former UN Under Secretary General of Human Rights. Uh, who stated, and I quote, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights has inspired, guided, and directed national and international energies toward the achievement of a worldwide awareness of the human person, as well as standards and machinery to protect human rights, and quote. And indeed, 70 years after the adoption of the Universal Declaration, this instrument has assumed, we can say, ever greater importance by acquiring a significant moral and political force, influencing legal instruments and measures of their implementation, and contributing to customary international law. Its broad context, and especially the provision of the right to life uh, for all people, also influenced the 49 Geneva Convention. And by the next year, members of the Council of Europe, our institution, specifically referred to the Declaration by name and its aim, and I quote, of securing the universal and effective recognition and observance of the rights of name the Iranian. And quote, and this was precisely said in signing the European Convention on Human Rights. We can say that certainly uh, in the 70 years, never before in history, has there been what is now described a universal culture of rights, in which the rights of so many men, women, and children are given attention in so many diverse places of the world, and which the international community refers to human rights as the common language of humanity. Nevertheless, I think we are all aware that gaps between theory and practice still exist, that abuses still occur, and at times even we see retrogression and sources of resistance remaining with us. Um, there does remain what has been called the unfinished ethical agenda of our time and the unfinished revolution of placing the human person squarely at the center of national and international values. However, I just want this little uh, sharing on, on some words of thought of hope. Uh, I think in my organization and I think within the NGO um, community, and this is what we'd like to, to share with all of you today is that the tasks that they have in the next decades, the perspective of history, may offer in a way considerable hope, not only for the future, but also for the power of visions that we see through the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. On a parlé donc de défis qui sont posés à, à l'universalité, les caractères universels et invisibles des droits de l'homme, donc affirmés par la déclaration universel des droits de l'homme, réitéré aussi lors de la deuxième conférence mondiale des droits de l'homme de Vienne en 1993. On l'a vu, ils ne sont pas souvent dans la pratique le vécu comme un socle qui engage tous les États ainsi que les organes de la société. Et c'est pour cela que pour cette table ronde, nous avons demandé à Manuel Deco, professeur émérite à l'Université Banque de l'Ansas par les deux, et expert internationalement reconnu en la matière, de vous intervenir aujourd'hui sur les thèmes des défis qui se pose précisément à l'universalité des droits de l'homme dans le cadre du droit international. Merci.